Hello and welcome to the online orientation for student organization registration. My name is Alec and I am a student staff member in the Center for Leadership and Involvement. And I'm Tim. I'm also a student staff member in the Center for Leadership and Involvement. Alec and I will be facilitating the orientation video for you today. Through this orientation we will talk about several different topics. We will start by sharing more about the Center for Leadership and Involvement or CFLAG. Our office not only reviews student organization applications, but can serve as a resource for your group and can also provide various trainings and services. Second, we will review a select few registered student organization or RSO policies while providing you with a connection where to find the remainder of the policies. Finally, we will talk about some important resources that are available to RSOs. Please note that upon completing the orientation video, you will be asked to complete a quiz within the student organization registration application. Throughout this presentation, we have identified the areas that you will be quizzed on. Pay special attention to the slides of the circular symbol shown on the screen, because these will be the topics that you will be quizzed on. The Center for Leadership and Involvement, or CFLI's mission, is to cultivate and engage students through practical leadership, skill development, and involvement experience. This means that we assist students in intentionally connecting with the far-ranging opportunities that exist throughout campus, including student organizations, the fraternity sorority community, internships, intramurals, volunteering, and many others. As a center, we offer leadership programming that supports students in making meaning of these experiences and in developing leadership capacity or the ability to affect positive change. We are located on the third floor of the Red Gym, and you can also reach us by phone and email. CFLY offers trainings and services to registered student organizations, and we will cover some of these now. For trainings, there are a couple of different sources that you can utilize. First is the Adventure Learning Programs, or ELPS, a student organization that is sponsored by CFLY. ELPS provides team building and leadership development trainings for student organizations that involve high and low ropes courses, scavenger hunts, roving workshops, and many other ways to build a team. CFLY also sponsors the Student Leadership Program, or SLP. SLP provides a number of different leadership development workshops and hosts the annual All-Campus Leadership Conference, which is designed to help student groups and student leaders develop leadership capacities in areas such as time management, effective delegation, organization management, and a host of other topics. Within the Wisconsin Involvement Network, or WIN, there are many different features that can be used both as an organization and as an individual. You are always welcome to reach out for a training or use a support feature at the bottom of the WIN website to learn more about the various features. We are also consistently updating our advisor training information and post this in the resource and policy guide, which we will cover later in this video as well. We would encourage you to share this resource with any organization advisors you may have. The center also facilitates the leadership certificate program. If you're interested in pursuing a leadership certificate, we encourage you to call or stop into our office to find out more about what the program entails. We also host the student organization fairs each fall and spring. Registered student organizations are able to sign up for a table at the event, and the sign up for the fair occurs a semester before the org fair happens. And again, you can look to the C5 website to find more information. Last but not least, while we talked a lot about web-related resources, we also provide in-person advising to student organizations. We have a full staff of advisors in our office, and we can help with a variety of topics, such as financing, event planning, conflicts, or ideas on how to successfully manage your organization. Sometimes it's just nice to talk to a human, and we are more than happy to talk to you. As a reminder, information on this slide will be covered in the quiz. In completing the organization registration process, you will become the primary contact for your registered student organization. There are a few important expectations of primary contacts we wanted to make sure to clarify. 1. You are the individual who our office will communicate with via your wisc.edu email. If there are questions, concerns, or action needed related to the student organization you are registering. 2. Primary contacts serves the default accessibility contact for the organization. Your group is holding an event and an individual with a disability is looking to request reasonable accommodations you are the person that will be contacted and tasked with ensuring those accommodations are set for the event. More information about this process can be found in the Student Organization Resource and Policy Guide. 3. As the primary contact, you also have the duty to inform organization members of university policies 
that affect their participation and the organization's activities. This includes the student organization code of conduct, student organization alcohol policy, chalking and leafletting policies, and any other policies pertaining to events, advertising, or funding that may be found in the student organization resource and policy guide. We will cover some of the most important and applicable policies as part of this video. Four, unfortunately at this time, students who have a Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act, or FERPA, shade in place with the Office of the Registrar are unable to serve as a primary contact for an organization, as all primary contacts must be publicly listed in WIN. You can change your primary contact at any time by following the instructions in the Wisconsin Involvement Network support site. A link to support can be found on the bottom left corner of every WIN page. Please note that information on the screen will appear in the quiz. Now we will review several important registered student organization or RSO policies that you will want to be aware of. Several times throughout this presentation, we have already mentioned and will continue to mention the Student Organization Resource and Policy Guide. This guide can be found at guide.cfly.wis.edu. This is the definitive source of information for student organizations on campus. Consider the RSO Wikipedia for our campus. We have pulled together information, policies, regulations, and resources from across the campus, city, and state to help your organization be successful. We want this information to be easy to access and always available to you. The sections that we provide information on are listed at the top of the page for easy navigation. Both the benefits and policies information can be found under the Student Org Essentials tab. The benefits subsection, for example, will highlight all of the benefits that come along with being a registered student organization while the policy subsection highlights important rules and regulations RSOs need to follow. As a reminder, one of the quiz questions will be based on the information on this screen. The Committee on Student Organizations, or CSO, is the group that holds registered student organizations accountable to the Student Organization Code of Conduct and University Policies. This group is responsible for carrying out the RSO disciplinary process. The committee is comprised of students, staff, faculty, and representatives of the Center for Leadership and Involvement. Organizations that violate any policies from the university or the student organization code of conduct may receive disciplinary sanctions from the committee. The, these sanctions may range anywhere from a warning letter to termination of an organization from campus. As part of the application process in becoming a student organization, you are agreeing to the student organization code of conduct and this set of guidelines. You can find the entire Code of Conduct in the Resource and Policy Guide online underneath the Policies section. It is important that you are not only aware of these policies, but that you also make sure that the other members of the organization are aware of them as well. Both the organization as a whole and its individual members can be held responsible for violations of these policies. Common examples of misconduct include violating the student organization alcohol policy and leafletting or chalking policy violations. We will discuss some of these policies in more detail in the following slides. Please note that there will be a quiz question on this information. Alcohol may potentially be part of your organizational activities. As such, we would like to take a few moments to address alcohol use within the student organizations and at organization events over the next few slides. 75% of cases investigated by the Committee on Student Organizations during the 2017-2018 year involved potential violations of the student organization alcohol policy. Sanctions as a result of these violations include additional alcohol education sessions for the organization and its members, alcohol restriction, which means that the organization cannot host events with alcohol, event restriction, meaning that organizations cannot host events at all, suspension, which is a set amount of time that the organization is not a recognized student organization and cannot conduct normal business events or programs, and finally, termination, meaning the organization can no longer register or function as a group on campus. As mentioned in the previous slide, 75% of investigated student organization misconduct is related to alcohol misuse. It is important that you and your organizations are familiar with the Student Organization Alcohol Policy, or SOAP. At any RSO event with alcohol, organizations must ensure that guests are provided with food and non-alcoholic beverages as an alternative option. If an event has individuals present that are under the minimum drinking age, then procedures must be set in place to prevent consumption of alcoholic beverages by these individuals. These required measures will be discussed in the following slide. 
Additionally, any RSO providing alcohol at a venue without an alcohol license, the following policies also apply. Groups must only serve beer and wine. Beer should only be served in individual cans or bottles. And common sources of alcohol, such as a keg or box wine, are not permitted. If event attendees are anticipated to include individuals below the minimum legal drinking age, procedures must be set in place to prevent consumption of alcoholic beverages by these individuals. The minimum requirements are, if the event is held at an alcohol licensed venue, sober monitors and or alcohol licensed venue staff must request an ID from every guest at the point of entry. Please note that regardless of who identifies the guests, the organization maintains responsibility for making sure guests are properly identified. At a venue without an alcohol license, sober monitors and or higher security staff must request IDs from every guest at the point of entry and before providing guests with alcohol. Again, regardless of who identifies the guests, the organization maintains responsibility for making sure that guests are properly identified. Alcohol is dispensed in a designated area for attendees at or above the minimum legal drinking age. This includes alcohol brought by event attendees. The organization will provide attendees with a wristband to indicate that the guest is at or above the legal minimum drinking age. At any event where alcohol is to be served, each sponsoring organization must provide sober monitors. Here are the policies regarding sober monitors for an event. A minimum of two sober monitors for up to 50 total attendees must be present at the event. One additional sober monitor from each sponsoring organization must be provided for every additional 25 attendees. So, for example, if your organization hosts an event with 100 people, you must provide four sober monitors. Over half of the sober monitors must be an executive officer in an executive position or have been a member for over one year. At least one sober monitor must be at least 21 years of age or older. The sober monitor shall refrain from the consumption of alcohol until the time that they have completed serving this capacity. And all sober monitors must complete an online sober monitor training program and pass a quiz prior to serving this role. The link to the training is presented here and is also found in the resource and policy guide. In addition to the student organization alcohol policy, we recommend that groups follow these additional points to increase the safety of events with alcohol. Do not serve or allow consumption of alcohol at events where a majority of students are under the minimum legal drinking age. Do not consume alcohol at general or executive board meetings. Do not use alcohol as an incentive for, for participating in an event or as prizes in contests. Liability increases when alcohol is used as an enticement. Do ensure that if not at a third party vendor, only sober monitors over the minimum legal drinking age serve as bartenders. Do make sure all members can legally attend events at a liquor licensed establishment. By definition, a restaurant, less than 50% of sales are from alcohol, or a tavern, more than 50% of sales are from alcohol which holds an 18-plus Center for Visual and Performing Arts license to the City of Madison. Do not have activities where consumption of alcohol is the purpose, consequence, or reward. Drinking games and using alcohol as a reward leads to overconsumption because people drink when they win or lose, not when they want to. Do use a type guest list that includes the names of all anticipated attendees. It is recommended that this list specifically note membership in the organization and age of the attendee, as well as the date of the event. Do not allow anyone to enter the event unless they are on the guest list prior to the event. Do set a specific start and end time for your event. Do not use organizational funds to purchase alcohol or pool money from attendees to provide alcohol for the event. A BYOB policy for individuals over the legal drinking age is the best way to ensure appropriate alcohol consumption. Do make sure that the food provided is unsalted. Salty foods encourage more alcohol consumption. Do not charge for alcohol or charge an admittance fee for an event where alcohol is provided. This is likely considered operating an unlicensed tavern and is a criminal offense. Do have third-party vendor bouncers ID guests on behalf of the organization However, the RSO remains responsible for all guests. The University of Wisconsin-Madison values a diverse community where all members are able to participate fully in the Wisconsin experience. Incidents of bias or hate affecting a person or group create a hostile campus climate and negatively impact the quality of the Wisconsin experience for community members. 
UW-Madison takes such incidents seriously and will investigate and respond appropriately to reported or observed incidents of bias or hate. Hate and bias incidents are single or multiple acts towards an individual group or their property that are so severe, pervasive, and objectively offensive that they create an unreasonably intimidating, hostile, or offensive work, learning, or program environment, and that one could reasonably conclude that are based upon actual or perceived age, race, color, creed, religion, gender identity or expression, ethnicity, national origin, disability, veteran status, sexual orientation, political affiliation, marital status, spirituality, cultural, socioeconomic status, or any combination of these or other related factors. Hate and bias incidents include, but are not limited to, slurs, degrading language, epithets, graffiti, vandalism, intimidation, symbols, and harassment that are directed towards or affect the targeted group or individual. Microaggressions are also examples of hate and bias incidents in the form of everyday slight, put down, indignity, or invalidation unintentionally directed toward a marginalized group. Incidents of hate or bias may contribute to hostile campus environment and can occur even if the act itself is unintentional or delivered as a joke, prank, or having humorous intent. Students who engage in hate or bias acts that violate university codes of conduct will be subject to disciplinary process. When university officials learn of these incidents, they investigate, seek disciplinary action where appropriate, and provide support for the victims. When a bias incident occurs, our university's first priority is to respond immediately to the community most directly affected. All incidents are tracked, but not all of them result in a campus-wide notification. Three ways to in create inclusive and supportive environments. One, treat all community members with respect and civility. These incidents are not funny and have real impact on the lives of our students. Two, look out for one another. If you see an act of hate or bias, interrupt and intervene on behalf of other members of our community. And three, report acts of hate and bias at students.wisc.edu forward slash report the hate and bias. In addition to the student organization alcohol policy, there are other policies that organizations and their members must abide by. Some of the most frequently violated relate to posting, leafletting, and chalking on campus. There are several aspects of the posting policies that are important to know. In order to put up a poster in a campus building, you must receive permission from the building manager. Only put posters or other advertisements on bulletin boards designated for their use. If your organization chooses to hand out small pieces of paper with information about your group or an event, otherwise known as leafletting, be sure to only leaflet in the designated areas of buildings approved by the department office, never in classrooms. When you do receive approval to leaflet, make sure to hand the flyer directly to the people and be sure to give them the choice to accept it or not. If this policy is not abided by, the organization could be sanctioned by the Committee on Student Organizations. In addition to leafletting, there are policies with regard to chalk on campus. Chalk is only allowed on university sidewalks and university streets. You can only use a water-based or water-soluble chalk. Oil-based and aerosol chalk will not come off over time on its own accord, nor through daily exposure to the elements, but water-based chalk will. You cannot chalk on vertical surfaces or other restricted areas, such as a side of a bridge, courtyard areas, university buildings, lakeshore paths, or underneath any overhang. Marking on a vertical surface requires physical effort to remove it because it will not come off on its own. This means that a physical plant employee must spend time and materials to remove it. As with leafletting, organizations can be sanctioned by the CSO if found to violate these policies. This could include a student organization being fined if physical plant employees have to remove any chalking on vertical surfaces or if water-based chalk was not used. Financial regulations are an important piece of student organization management. Every RSO must have a student contact person who can represent the RSO in financial matters as part of the application process. This person will be listed as the second financial contact. Your organization should maintain accurate and complete financial records. This includes information about money that is coming into the organization but also money going out. 
If requested, all records must be available no later than 15 days after receiving a request from the CSO Chair or Center for Leadership and Involvement Director. If your organization is collecting money via credit cards, you need to be in compliance with purchasing card industry or PCI standards. These standards are set up by credit card companies to help ensure the safety and security of credit card data. There is more information in the Resource and Policy Guide about the standards of PCI. Finally, organizations can be held accountable for fraudulent practices such as falsifying information on grant applications. Please be sure you're providing accurate information and keep accurate records of all your organization's finances. Here are some financial best practices to keep in mind as you are managing your organization. First off, prepare a budget for your organization with expected income and expenses for the year. This may seem pretty basic, but a lot of organizations do not take the time to do this. It is helpful to be proactive and think about events and programs that you want to be able to host throughout the year. Second, be careful with ATM or debit cards. These cards are very helpful to make purchases that an organization may have to make, but it is important to be mindful of the potential problems with having debit cards. Some organizations have struggled with this because people can take out cash, but that money is not easily tracked once it is withdrawn. If you do want to take out cash for your organization, such as being able to make change for a fundraiser you're having, we recommend going to the bank and making sure to get a receipt for records purposes. Next, require two signatures to sign off on checks and two names to be listed on the bank account. This is really helpful when it comes to transitions between student leadership and memberships. We have had a number of organizations that only have one name and if that student graduates or studies abroad, then the organization has not been able to access the funds in the accounts. We do advise that all banking transactions are handled through checks and deposit slips. This allows for accurate record keeping. Finally, in order to have an organizational bank account or receive money for a service or other payment, your organization will need an employer identification number or EIN from the IRS. The Center for Leadership and Involvement does not track or retain this information. In the event that the organization is unaware of their EIN number, they should contact the financial institution where they hold an account, and that financial institution should have the number on file and a way for the organization to access it. We will switch gears a little bit and now discuss some of the registered student organization resources available to you and your group. At the Center for Leadership Involvement, we have a lot of information that we make sure is available through our website, which is cfly.wisc.edu. A majority of the information that will be helpful for your student organization will be found under the Student Organizations tab. Under the Student Organizations tab, you can find a couple of useful tools that may be helpful to explore. The first is the Discover an Organization section. Here, students can find information about how to find an organization, information about the Student Organization Fair, and more. As an organization, this section is helpful to you because it hosts information about student organization eligibility and how to complete the registration process. You should want to reference these requirements so your group can stay in good standing as an organization. Also within this area of our website, you will find the link to the Student Organization Resource and Policy Guide that we've mentioned previously. Within the Resource and Policy Guide, you can find information about the Wisconsin Involvement Network, or WIN, as well as the benefits and policies that come with being an RSO. Within the Resource and Policy Guide, you will also find information on grants and funding, signing up for the Fall and Spring Student Organization Fairs, and the Change Request Form, which is used to update information about your organization, such as the name or new constitution. The guide will also provide you with marketing tools that may be helpful to your organization, which we will highlight a little bit more shortly. As an RSO at UW-Madison, you will have access to a variety of technology resources to help your student organization. The primary resource is the Wisconsin Involvement Network, or WIN, as we often reference. More than likely, you have at least access WIN by starting the registration process for your organization and in turn gained access to this video. WIN also offers student organizations a number of different helpful resources. You can manage your organization's roster and membership in WIN. Additionally, you can market events and track attendance for those events. There is also the option to upload documents so you can share resources with the organization and you can create forms and send direct messages to members. You can also share photos and even host selections all through WIN. 
You can find help documents and video tutorials on how to use and manage your organization using WIN and the Resource and Policy Guide, or by visiting the support link at the bottom left corner of every WIN page. If your organization would like to have a physical address to send and receive mail, you can apply for a mailbox at the Student Activity Center, or SAC. The Student Activity Center is located at 333 East Campus Mall. In order to get a mailbox, you must complete an agreement and return it to ASM, or the Associated Students of Madison's office in the Student Activity Center. Your organization will have access to that mailbox for one year, and you'll need to complete an agreement each year in order to keep that mailbox. The SAC also has a limited number of storage lockers available, as well as workspace and meeting rooms. Please contact the SAC Governing Board Chair or ASM directly with questions. One of the benefits of being a student organization on campus is the ability to reserve campus space. Reservations of campus space are facilitated through the Campus Event Services Office, or CISO. Reservations can be made by any individual in your organization as long as they are listed after the appropriate section in the About tab of your organization's WIN page. Spaces available through CISO are in the Memorial Union, Union South, the Red Gym, most classrooms on campus, and some outdoor spaces such as the lower third of Baskin Hill and Library Mall. For spaces that are not listed here, you can contact them directly and ask for more information and details about their space reservation process. If you have questions regarding the space reservation changes for registered student organizations, please contact the Campus Event Services Office directly. There are other spaces on and off campus that RSOs are able to reserve and which are not reserved through the Campus Event Services Office. A few of those places are listed here on this slide. It is important to be mindful that each location will have their own reservation process, potential fees, as well as important policies and procedures that will be important to know and follow. Please check out the webpage listed on this slide for more information about additional spaces to reserve. If you need audiovisual equipment for events or meetings, you can obtain this in a variety of ways. If you reserve space in Memorial Union or Union South, you can get this equipment free of charge through CISO. You just need to make sure that you're making this request at the time you make the reservation. The same applies to campus classrooms across campus that you reserve from CISO. Just make sure you ask for a smart room at the time of reservation. If you're using campus classrooms, you will need to complete an online AV equipment training. That training is listed in the Resource and Policy Guide. Upon completion of the training, you will receive a code that will give you access to the podium computer. If you are using additional equipment, such as the microphone or DVD, you will also need to obtain an AV key from the Center for Leadership and Involvement. You can pick up this key in our office, which is on the third floor of the Red Gym. During the academic year, we are open from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. weekdays only, and you can stop by at any time to get your key on the day of your event. The Center for Leadership and Involvement also offers a rental of card scanners to student organizations. Card scanners are a great tool to help track attendance at events. Once you return the scanner after your event, the attendance is put into WIN so you can have a record of attendance and a way to connect with attendees so you choose. Card scanners are also great because they help speed up the registration process. Students only need to show their WIS card instead of writing down their name and email on a piece of paper. This also saves you a ton of time after the event because everything is already electronic. Once the information has been uploaded to WIN, you can use that list to send out follow-up information or surveys to help evaluate the event. To reserve these scanners, you will need to complete a form that is found on the CFly WIN page. Please make sure, in addition to filling out this form, that your organization has also created an event in WIN. Be on the lookout for the approval for both the WIN event and the reservation request form. It is helpful to submit these forms at least three days ahead of your event. Please note, CFly only has a limited number of scanners, so make sure to plan ahead and complete this form when you decide to use the scanners. There will also be quiz questions about information on this page. One great way to market for your organization and or its events is a mass email. RSOs may send out one mass email per semester to all students on campus. There is a request form found on CFLY's homepage, cfly.wisc.edu, that will need to be submitted. These mass emails do take eight business days to process, so you need to be sure to plan ahead. There are no exceptions to this process. Additionally, there is a cost associated with these mass emails, which is $100. You can pay by credit card, cash, check, or by a funding stream. 
Another communication tool available to student organizations is the CFLY Buzz. This is a weekly newsletter that is sent to all RSO primary contacts as well as anyone else that is subscribed to the listserv. The Buzz is ideal for student organization announcements such as training opportunities, upcoming org events, or reminders for organizations. It is great for student organizations because it is free and you are welcome to post the CFLY Buzz as many times as you want. There are a few different ways to access funding for your student organization and its events. The primary way is via funding from student government, known as the Associated Students of Madison, or ASM. Additionally, there are also a number of other grants available from other offices. However, there are some important things to note when applying for these other grant opportunities. In an effort for the university to become more fiscally responsible, the Chancellor has established that the Associated Students of Madison is the primary funding source for student organization events. All registered student organizations, or RSOs, will only be eligible for funding from the Chancellor-funded grants if the RSO has already received an ASM event grant for that semester, or the RSO has already applied for an ASM event grant for a program that semester and is on the waitlist for an ASM hearing, or the RSO only seeks funding for something ASM cannot fund, examples are food or a closed event, or ASM is completely out of funds for that academic year. In addition to being aware of the grant policy, it is also important to be aware of the sources of funding that are available to you as a registered student organization. There is a full list of grants and funding opportunities in the Resource and Policy Guide. A great place to get started is with our own student government, the Associated Students of Madison, or ASM. They have event grants, travel grants, operation grants, and open funds. Operations and open fund grants are more focused on the day-to-day -day things that you may need to run an organization, such as office supplies or printing money. The event and travel grants focus more on a one-time program or trip that is planned around the organization's mission. There are some additional grants that are specifically for event funding many of which are the Chancellor funded grants. As mentioned in the previous slide, these grants must abide by the grant policy regarding applying to ASM first. The events that are funded through these grants are typically larger events that are open to all or most students on campus. As you can see, there are different grants associated with different offices in the Division of Student Life, and you want to be mindful of the various office missions when applying for these grants to ensure that your event will support your mission as well as the office's mission. Further details and links to the grant application processes for these funding options can be found in the Resource and Policy Guide. It is important that as your organization plans events, meetings, and programs on campus that you find ways to make these accessible to all students. There is a handout on the McBurney Disability Resource Center website that can assist in providing guidance to your organization on how to plan an accessible event for all UW-Madison students. There are many helpful tips to make sure that everyone on campus is able to enjoy the event that you are planning. We also highly recommend that you include an accessibility tagline on advanced publicity so the students can request accommodations. This tagline should include who students could contact if they need accommodations. This could include receiving a large print agenda or interpreter services. An example of this can be found in the Resource and Policy Guide. The primary contact is by default the contact person for accommodation requests, so please be, re please be prepared for students to reach out to you. There are excellent resources in the McBurney Disability Resource Center website, so we encourage you to check these out. As a reminder, CFLY is here to support you throughout the year. Feel free to reach out if you are in need of a training, advisement and planning of an event, information about applying for a grant, or if you just have a question. You can call, email, or visit our office in the Red Gym. So that wraps up our RSO orientation video. Thank you for taking the time to watch it today. Before you close out, I will review the next steps and provide you with some additional details. You will need to return the RSO registration application and win. Here you will need to answer the quiz questions about the, what material we just covered in this video. Once you complete the application and hit submit, it will be sent to the Center for Leadership and Involvement. We will then begin the reviewing process. Please make sure to keep an eye out for any communication from our office in the event that we need some more information from you for the registration process. We wish you the best of luck this year and please don't forget to use this as a resource if you ever need anything.